We are back. It's the Alex Jones Show fourth hour. And again, whether you support Donald Trump or not, doesn't matter. The media is completely rigged. WikiLeaks has exposed the fact that the media is not just friendly with the Clinton campaign, with the Democratic Party, with the left in general. They're working together. They're not talking about James O'Keefe's bombshell revelations about voter fraud, about the Democratic Party starting planning the violence at Trump rallies. They're not talking about massive WikiLeaks revelations on a daily basis. They're not talking about Tracy Martin, who was on the show earlier, the former Clinton chef who personally witnessed Hillary Clinton call a black servant the N-word. Now, that's just an accusation, but so are... What is it, up to nine now different women making accusations, many of them already debunked, against Donald Trump? Nothing more than accusations. There's no audio tape, there's no videotape to prove it, but what do we see from the rigged media? 24-7 wall-to-wall blanket coverage. CNN, Anderson Cooper. They had Melania Trump on last night asking her again about this Billy Bush tape. 11-year-old comments a story that's now nearly two weeks old. That's what they're still talking about. They're not talking about James O'Keefe. They cancelled his appearances nationwide because they were afraid of retribution from a future Hillary administration. Well, it's not really that, is it? The explanation is they're working hand in glove with Hillary Clinton. That's been exposed over and over again in the WikiLeaks emails. I mean, I mentioned it before the break. You've got an email sent by Politico's Glenn Thrush, who, yeah, we should give him credit, to be honest. At least he's authentic and honest in admitting that he's a hack. This is his quote that's in the email sent to John Podesta. I have become a hack and will send the whole section to you. So he's admitting that he's a hack, sending articles about to be published to Hillary's campaign for their approval. He should be given credit. At least he's honest unlike the rest of the Hillary prostitutes who attacked me on Friday for saying that the New York Times was running its stories by the Clinton campaign before they were published, saying, oh, they were just asking for comment. Really? How many instances of this do we need to see? I had mainstream journalists on Twitter saying, oh, going to dinner with John Podesta, that's not evidence of bias. That's nothing to worry about. We, we might still write critical articles about Hillary. Absolute crap. He's literally cooking dinner for 30 reporters. They're exchanging emails, running stories by him, begging him, rolling over like lap dogs, saying, oh, can we please use this quote from Hillary? You know, giving Hillary questions the day before the, the town hall debate. You can roll right through the gamut. Absolute complicity, brazen complicity. The media has been completely exposed. I mean, what, did it have 6% trust before this? Now it's going to have, what, 2% trust. Absolutely disgraceful behavior. You look at journalist donations to each political candidate. 382,000, this is out of a Truth Re Revolt report, $382,000 has been donated by journalists to Hillary's campaign. Only $14,000 has been donated by journalists to Trump's campaign. So don't you dare tell me that there's no bias in that. Absolutely despicable. We've got CNN yet again. Don Lemon a few days ago, and I heard about this, I thought they were just arguing the toss over whether, you know, Hillary was laughing at the rapist who she helped get free or not. But no, it was worse than that. Don Lemon got up on CNN and said that this tape of Hillary Clinton laughing about the fact that the rapist of Kathy Shelton, at the time 12 years old, fooled a lie detector test. She was laughing about that. She knew he fooled a lie detector test, therefore was guilty. Don Lemon got up on CNN. Not only did he say that she wasn't laughing at him, he claimed that the tape was fake. This tape has been out for two years. It was, un it was uncovered from genuine, authentic archives. It was verified two years ago as being Hillary Clinton in the tape. But again, the rigged media, what do they do? Don Lemon gets up on CNN, says it's fake, says the entire tape is fake. Well, fact check, it's not. It's been verified for two years. Again, 
CNN says it's a crime. They actually said it was a crime to look at WikiLeaks emails, but it's okay if the media does it, meaning us, and you should just trust whatever we say about it, even though we've, de we've devoted literally nine minutes to it versus hours and hours and hours about Donald Trump's comments from 2005. Because we're fair and balanced, because we're not rigged at all. Again, you've got the media attacking us every single day now, calling us, for example, The Hill yesterday called me because Donald Trump retweeted me. One of the Internet's most prominent conspiracy theorists. They've still got that little term which they like to use, of course. You know, the New York Times crafted the most grotesque, destructive, and harmful conspiracy theories for two years before the invasion of Iraq, a conspiracy theory that led to hundreds of thousands of dead people, thousands of dead US troops. The Middle East ruined the rise of ISIS. That was somewhat of a more damaging conspiracy theory than anything I've ever said or anything Alex Jones has ever said. But again, that's their go-to pejorative term. They're the biggest conspiracy theories, the lies they peddle, harm people, kill people, destroy entire continents. So don't lecture me about being a conspiracy theorist on a daily basis. Again, absolutely abysmal from the lying, rigged mainstream media. Let's get to this Tracy Martin tape because they're not going to cover this. Again, what are those claims that are being made against Donald Trump from all these women who claim he sexually abused them? They're accusations. There's no evidence behind them. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's have wall-to-wall -wall media coverage every single frigging day while ignoring massive WikiLeaks revelations, which we're going to get on onto in a minute. Fine. But if you want to cover regular, if you want to cover accusations with no evidence behind them, but accusations from people who were around these two presidential candidates, then why is nobody talking about Tracy Martin? This is a former Clinton chef, worked under Clinton in the first Bill Clinton administration, saying, accusing Hillary Clinton of calling a black servant the N-word. His accusation, his claim, holds exactly the same amount of weight as any of those women accusing Trump of sexually assaulting them. If not more, because there's evidence that he actually worked under Clinton, that he was actually around Hillary Clinton, whereas half of these stories by these women have already been debunked. Their narrative has been pulled apart. But fair enough, let's talk about it. It's just an accusation, it's just a claim. Well, so is Tracy Martin saying that Hillary Clinton used the N-word against a black person. Not a single mainstream media story about it now almost 24 hours after we first posted this on InfoWars.com. In fact, barely any coverage from the alternative media either. There was Gateway Pundit came out with one story, which we appreciate, but, you know, where's Fox News? Again, these claims hold the same weight as any of the claims being made by female Trump accusers. The exact same situation. This is an accusation. Let's delve into it. Is Hillary Clinton a closet racist? Well, she calls Robert C. Byrd, the founder and leader of a KKK chapter, her mentor. So let's look into it. You know, Bill Clinton saying to Senator Kennedy at the time about Barack Obama, this guy would have been making us coffee a few years ago. Again, just casual racist remark. So let's look into it. Are the Clintons racist? Do they call black people the N-word? Is Fox News going to look into it? Is any of the rigged mainstream media even going to acknowledge it? Even if they just dismiss it as another conspiracy theory, do they even dare acknowledge it? Let's go to this clip. This is Tracy Martin. This is the video I put up on YouTube last night. Get this story out to the mainstream media and ask the question, if you're going to give Trump's accusers wall-to-wall -wall media coverage, will you even mention this? Here's Tracy Martin, the Clinton chef, accusing Hillary Clinton of calling a black servant the N-word. Roll the clip. A former travel chef in the Clinton White House claims that he personally witnessed Hillary Clinton angrily call a black man the N-word. Tracy Martin, who has cooked for numerous heads of state, dropped this bombshell on News Radio 930 WBEN 
during the Tom Bowley show. Hillary Clinton, who comes across as a friend to blacks, and she's probably going to end up with 90% of the black vote in November. Obviously, I don't want you to use the complete word, but uh, Hillary has a penchant for using a word which, if anyone else used it uh, as frequently, can be career ending. Tell us that story. I was doing a, a event at the Elizabeth Taylor Medical Center in Washington, which is an HIV AIDS clinic. And I was doing a, a, event, a, tea, a tea prior to the public, the press party. And that was with Mrs. Clinton and Mrs. Chirac, Jacques Chirac, the former president of France, his wife. And um, a gentleman of color came in with something and it did not please her the way it was. When he walked out, she says that, and then she used the N-word. So you're at this event, and the it's just the three of it's three of us in the room, and then the one person that brought something in, and it wasn't to her pleasure, and that's when it happened. So you are alone with Hillary after the black guy brings something that Hillary doesn't like, and she said to you that N-word. Yes, according to Martin. Hillary made racist comments on a routine basis. You know, they think nothing of it. The because there's nobody, there's no press around. They're, I mean, after you've been around them long enough, whether it be, you know, the Clintons or whether it be the Kennedys or whoever, once they feel comfortable with you, they, their guard is let down. Did that surprise you? Um, to some extent. But like I said, go back to what I said earlier about the high of being in there. You know, you just have to accept that as okay behavior by these people in that situation. Within 48 hours of doing the interview, Martin claimed that his phone was hacked and that his apartment was broken into at 3 a.m. Host Tom Bowerly also said that after the interview, his loved one received an odd voicemail message from a phone number that was later revealed from the WikiLeaks dump to have come from within the DNC. Bowerly also claims that the man who hired Tracy Martin as a chef for the Clintons died suspiciously in a hiking accident. The notion that Hillary Clinton is a closet racist isn't much of a stretch. After all, she called black people super predators. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. And her mentor was Robert Byrd, the founding member and leader of a chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Her husband, Bill Clinton, also once expressed his anger that Ted Kennedy was endorsing Barack Obama in favor of Hillary by belittling Obama because he was black. A few years ago, this guy would have been getting his coffee, Clinton told Kennedy. Kennedy said he was deeply offended by Bill's racist remark. We've seen reports that there is an actual videotape of Hillary using the N-word. Tracy Martin's claim is just an accusation. There's no audio or videotape of what happened. But then again, there's no actual proof to back up any of the claims of sexual assault being made against Donald Trump. And yet the mainstream media is giving it wall-to-wall -wall coverage. If accusations of Trump's sexism are worthy of blanket press attention, are accusations of Hillary's racism equally worthy? Imagine if an eyewitness who worked for Trump came out and said they heard Trump use the N-word. Do you think the media would be interested? Well, of course they would. You'd never hear the end of it. Will the media even acknowledge this story? No. They'll either ignore it entirely or attack the credibility of Tracy Martin, claiming he never worked for the Clintons or that he's lying about what he saw. Did Hillary really refer to a black person as the N-word? I'll let you be the judge. A gentleman of color came in with something and it did not please her the way it was when he walked out. Tracy she Martin. says that, and then she used the N-word. Okay, we need to get that video out because, again, the weight behind the Trump accusers, how does the media treat them? Wall-to-wall -wall coverage, absolute saturation, just believes them off the cuff, basically, gives them a 30-minute platform, in the case of Anderson Cooper, for them to make these claims. Are they going to allow Tracy Martin the same platform? Are they even going to acknowledge this story? Is Fox News going to pick it up? Get that video out. Send it to all the rigged media outlets. Force them to cover the Tracy Martin issue. Not much time left, so we're going to get to these uh, Podesta email revelations that have come out today. Again, these are just the ones from today <laughs> to give you an idea 
of the volume. This is part 11 of the WikiLeaks Podesta email releases. So we've got Podesta calling Bernie Sanders a doofus. So again, remind me again, why is Bernie Sanders endorsing Hillary? We've got Hillary's campaign rigging the entire primary process against him. We've got Podesta, Hillary's campaign chairman, calling Bernie Sanders a doofus. We've got Hillary in leaked speeches calling Bernie Sanders supporters the lost generation, calling them basement dwellers. We've got Bernie Sanders supporters being tricked into voting, into supporting Hillary by this uh, plan by Clinton surrogates to fool them, to say, oh, we're going to change the uh, rules on superdelegates, give them, you know, a token victory, which actually means nothing whatsoever, to fool them into supporting Hillary Clinton. That was revealed by the WikiLeaks emails. Now we've got Podesta calling Bernie a doofus again. Why is Bernie Sanders still endorsing Hillary Clinton? Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook, in another email, is accused of helping to cover up sexual assault allegations. Basically, it was an individual called Marlon Marshall who worked on the 2008 Hillary campaign, cornering women, making them uncomfortable, making suggestions about having sex. The source in this email claims Robbie Mook, who is uh, Clinton's campaign manager, was made aware of the issue but declined to act on it because he was personal friends with the accused sexual abuser. Is the media going to talk about that or are they going to prattle on about Donald Trump's comments from 2005? Again, this is just from today. Hillary Clinton, again, we had her in the private and the public position. She, she got called out on that. Privately told building trade she would not oppose pipelines, but when asked about it in public, about the NED pipeline, she said no. So again, conflict between the private and the public position. We've got another email that talks about them wanting to take on a token Asian woman to have a phony balance of minorities. We've got John Podesta scheming with the George Soros Open Society president on who they would rally for, who they would push to get as the replacement for Scalia the day after he died. Again, Podesta communicating with the president of George Soros's Open Society Institute, scheming on the next Supreme Court pick. We'll be back with more WikiLeaks revelations in the final segment of the Alex Jones Show Live. Don't go away. Breaking news at Infowars.com. We are back on the final segment of the Alex Jones Show on this Tuesday edition. Now, before we get back into the final news stories, I want to direct you to Infowarslife.com because we've got this week's main debate mega special, which is get Brainforce for a massive 25% off. Now, I took Brainforce when I last visited Austin. Again, jet lag, tired, ill. Hosted a three-hour radio show on this. It really helps bring clarity, calms down your brain. Really works. I've tried it myself. It really works. It works, in fact, better than the other similar brands of this that I tried in terms of nootropics, the other brands that are on the market. It is brain force. It is 25% off InfoWarsLife.com, and you get free shipping on that as well. And remember, we're not funded by George Soros. Like Black Lives Matter is, we're not funded by the government of Bahrain and other Middle Eastern dictatorships like CNN is. We're not funded by giant pharmaceutical companies. We're funded by you, the listener. And your support is what has enabled us to grow and expand and take on the rigged media directly, which is why they're now getting nervous and lashing out on a daily basis. So get InfoWars Brainforce for a massive 25% off InfoWarsLife.com. Free shipping on that. It's the main debate mega special at InfoWarsLife.com. Go there today. Now, we were talking about the WikiLeaks emails, the Podesta emails. Again, George Soros has cropped up. He's there talking with the president of George Soros's Open Society about who they're going to get to replace Scalia, the Supreme Court judge, the day after he died. Why is John Podesta of Hillary's campaign talking to an Open Society George Soros operative about replacing a Supreme Court judge? Remember, we had the other email regarding that with the Mysterious mention of wet work in regard to Scalia's death. I'm sure that was just a coincidence. Another email which came out today. Hillary campaign had a conference call about Bill Clinton's secret lover known as the Energizer. Now, remember, we had the story about a week ago where the Clinton campaign was being warned by some of their surrogates that 
people on the inside were too panicked about these uh, Bill Clinton sex life past revelations. Well, now they were having a conference call, basically a series of panicked emails between different members of the Clinton campaign about a new book on the hidden lives of presidents, which claims that former U.S. President Bill, Bill Clinton had a mistress code named Energizer. So there was a flurry of emails, a conference call, panic about how they would deal with that revelation. So it shows you that they are incredibly concerned about the damage that Bill Clinton's past is doing to Hillary Clinton's current campaign. But again, the media is talking about Trump's sexual assault accusers who have no evidence whatsoever. They're not talking about Tracy Martin, the former Clinton chef, who said he personally witnessed Hillary Clinton use the N-word against a black person while he was working for her during an event. They didn't talk about that accusation. Let's cover some final stories here. Cultural enrichment news. Muslim woman screams out in pain as she is caned 23 times in Indonesia for standing too close to her boyfriend. She seems to have forgotten that Islam is a religion of peace. Brother of dead Syrian refugee bomb plotter vows revenge. So Germany caught this Syrian refugee who was plotting a terrorist attack in Germany. They asked his brother about the situation after he committed suicide when he was caught. He said, you understand, I have nothing more to say about it. I will come as a refugee, saying that he will enact revenge, and I guess he should be invited into the country or you're racist. Female Af Afghan interpreter raped in Calais migrant camp. Now they're importing those children to Britain, even though they're blatantly not children, they're men in their 30s and 40s. But again, Hillary Clinton wants to import tens of thousands of Syrian refugees into the United States, even though Europe is experiencing this nightmare now on a daily basis. That's going to wrap it up for the Alex Jones Show. InfoWars Nightly News coming up tonight. Alex will be back tomorrow, 11 to 2. Breaking news at InfoWars.com. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own, air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war. Pathogens added to the food and water and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands, and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.